Completeness and consistency have been the underlying questions of mathematics from its beginning, and have always been inherent questions of mathematics. From the Greeks until modern day, we have used axiomatized systems to define mathematical theory. Axioms are concepts that are just believed and not proven. You might recognize some of Euclid's elements axioms put forth that paved the way for the creation of geometry, such as parallel lines never intersect and all right angles are equal. One might think that these are trivially obvious, but a mathematician has very different goals than to be obvious. As a mathematician develops his theory, the question is always there. Does this necessarily follow? It's from a theory's axioms that the entirety of a theory is developed with perfect logic and deduction. It's here, in the deduction and self-questioning, that the question of completeness and consistency arises. Completeness, a measure of the quality of the extension of a theory. Have all the questions answerable been answered? And consistency, a measure of the quality of the logical deduction of a theory. Does the theory naturally follow from the defined axiom? Until Gödel, mathematics was thought to be an art of absolute certainty, tracing its lineage of perfect derivation to the ancient Greeks. Mathematics was thought of as an unparalleled art of precision that could address topics with definite and particular certainty through the advancement of mathematical technique. It was a man named David Hilbert who struggled with this concept of mathematics first and put forth a list of problems to address in mathematics, including proofs of consistency. It was Gödel who answered first and with an unexpected answer. Here we have Gödel's first incompleteness theorem. If P is consistent, then there is a sentence, sigma, in the language of P, such that neither sigma nor its negation, not sigma, is provable in P. What this says is that if a theory, namely P, is consistent, then it must necessarily not be complete, in that sigma cannot be evaluated to be valid or invalid. And here we have Gödel's second incompleteness theorem. If P is consistent, then cons, the statement in the language of P that expresses the consistency of P, is not provable in P. This statement directly addresses Hilbert's problem with an answer. No, there is not a way to prove the consistency of a theory. Gödel showed that if P is consistent, then the statement that it is consistent cannot be evaluated with theory P alone. If another theory is used to evaluate that statement, then the further theory must be proven to be consistent before its evaluation can be considered valid. Here is where history takes a new direction. Gödel proved his incompleteness theorems using a system he called Gödel numbering, which ultimately culminated in Turing's creation of the register machine. Alan Turing was born in 1912, this year marking a hundred years since his birth. Turing was responsible for a great number of achievements in many fields. His greatest work was in mathematics, logic, cryptography, and in the field of his own creation, computation. His contributions to cryptography were many, but his greatest was the creation of a machine called the Bombay, a machine capable of decrypting the German Enigma, or the code the Germans used to encrypt their messages in World War II. Turing was also a notably eccentric man, as well as homosexual. In a state investigation, the British state discovered that he was homosexual, and under the gross indecency laws in effect in Britain that illegalized homosexuality, Turing was faced with imprisonment or hormone therapy, the latter of which he opted for. Soon after the beginning of his hormone therapy, Turing was found dead by his bedside with a half-eaten apple. The official report reads intentional suicide by cyanide poisoning, but some have claimed murder by poisoning the apple, and others have claimed that he worked in the lab the previous day with cyanide and could have possibly mistakenly poisoned himself by ingesting cyanide off of his finger. Undoubtedly, Turing's greatest achievement was his idea of a universal Turing machine, a type of register machine. Turing machines stored values and wrote values onto an infinite loop of placeholders, allowing for the processing of data. Register machines, however, differ from Turing machines in that they use registers, specific placeholders, to store values instead of an inf infinite loop. Michael will now demonstrate a simple register machine written in Python code that adds the values of register A to register B in a simple program. In this demo, we'll look at a small, simple Python register adding machine. When we run the program, it prompts us for startup values in the registers. For register A, we'll use a value of 5, and for B, a value of 3. The register machine then shows us its actions step by step. 
First, it empties register C just to be sure in case there was a value left from the last time the program ran. Then, it transfers the contents of register A to register C. It does this by subtracting a value from A, then adding a value to register C. It repeats this until register A contains zero. The process is then repeated for register B. Finally, the program echoes the register value for C. In this case, 5 plus 3 equaled 8. Further, Turing proved that Turing machines can effectively evaluate all formal axiomatized systems. Through the use of girdle numbering, all axioms and theories can be reduced to a numerical representation that can be stored in nodes, paths, and processes in a Turing machine or register machine. Simply put, Turing's thesis says that if it's computable at all, it can be computed by a register machine. With the invention of register machines, it was realized that particular processes never halted. Michael has an example of a non-halting function so that you can see exactly what a non-halting function looks like. In this example, I'll start with the non-register compatible method, which is not looped. This program simply takes a value, stores it in a register, and empties it. In this program, we set the register to zero which is not necessarily compatible with the standard register machine. An action that is would be to use a loopable method where it will check how much is left in the register and remove one until how much is left is zero. We can see that it removes one each time through. This program will never halt because it's been given an invalid start number. Subtracting one from a negative number will obviously never reach zero. Determining whether or not a process halts for a human is not so difficult. Under careful inspection of a program for places where the program could continuously loop forever can indicate a non-halting process. But an algorithmic detection of a halting problem is impossible. Let's assume that we have found a process defined by function h of x such that the process returns 0 if the process in question never halts and 1 if the function halts. If this is going to be a complete theory, there must also exist a g of x such that it returns 0 if h of x is 0 and is undefined if h of x is 1. We can further simplify this by noting that if the process in question never halts, g of x returns 0, and if the function halts, g of x returns a specific value. We can represent this in a register machine, where p sub n represents the processes analogous to the function h of x, and this entire process is analogous to g of x. We can see here that after the results of the process p of n or the function h of x are stored to register a, if p of n, n returns 0, i.e. the process in question is undefined, then the program exits. If p of n stored a value to register a, such that some value can be subtracted from a, then that value will be stored to register a, and the program will never halt. If these are all true processes and functions, then we should effectively be able to examine the results of a particular example. By Turing's thesis, we know that if g of m is a function, it can be represented by some process f sub m of m in a register machine. For any given statement, there are a total of two possible values for its definition, defined or undefined. Let's examine each in separate cases. Looking at case 1, we know that if f sub m of m is defined, then h of m is equal to 0. If h of m is 0, then g of m will also be defined as 0 by the definition of g. We can now substitute f sub m for g of m by their definition of equality. And we've shown that f sub m of m is equal to 0 in cases where f sub m of m is undefined. And now we can see the inconsistency of cases where f sub m of m is undefined. Let us now look at cases where f sub m of m is defined. In such cases, h of m is 1, and g of m is undefined. g of m can then again be substituted with f sub m of m, and f sub m of m is undefined. And again, we have contradicted ourselves. By showing that in all cases, assuming the existence of a function h that determines a process's decidability results in a self-contradiction, we have completed a proof by contradiction that h cannot exist. 
Now that we have the sufficient tools to prove Gödel's incompleteness theorem, let's go ahead with that proof. Assume register machine M exists and has systems and functions and whatnot within it. Let's also assume another register machine with system F encoded into it. Let's assume that this F is both complete and consistent. To be complete, F must be able to decide the halting of functions within F. Therefore, imagining a system F where H of X exists, we can evaluate the processes in M. To do so, the output of M is piped into H of X and output. We know we are guaranteed decidable output from H of X because it's defined to be in a consistent system F. However, we know that h of x is an undecidable function and in itself necessitates inconsistency. Therefore, if this system is to be co complete, it must necessarily include h of x and be inconsistent. And if one were to remove h of x, the system would no longer be complete, but could potentially be consistent. Now the question arises, how do we know that this is true for all systems and not just system M? We remind ourselves of Turing's thesis showing that a register machine can represent any mathematically defined system, and therefore all mathematical systems must not be both consistent and inconsistent. Gödel and many others are the mathematicians we have to thank for the undecidability of mathematics. I may say this coyly, but there is truth to this gratitude. These men were responsible for the development of the field of metamathematics, the study of mathematics through mathematics. This field now incorporates the most profound philosophical reasoning about the human understanding of mathematics and our understanding of mathematics' existence, such as the belief of formalism, the belief that mathematics is nothing more than a human creation with no intrinsic meaning and simply a game played out with precise rules and perfect pieces. Beyond philosophical study about the meaning behind mathematics, Turing and others' work in computer science that has now been realized in a physical form has done more to shape the world around us than any other advancement in the modern era. Incompleteness and inconsistency may be a burden to those who seek a perfect mathematics, but in burdening mathematicians everywhere, incompleteness and inconsistency have laid the way for a much deeper understanding of the unknowables in this world.